All right, so in today's math lesson, what we're doing today is solving equations. One-step equations using addition and or subtraction. Nothing major, but still pretty cool stuff. Very exciting, very exciting. So let's take a look at this first equation here. In this equation here, we have e plus 12 gives us 20. Now, our ultimate job here is to solve for e. What does e equal? Well, in order to find our answer here, and I'm sure you know, just taking a look, it's probably 8. Well, we're going to solve this algebraically. Now, to solve this algebraically, what we want here, by the time we do, we're done, we want e on one side of this equal sign, and we want our value on the other side of our equal sign. How do we do that? Well, the equal sign has to be seen as some kind of balance. It's like a little scale on a little, you know, there you go, on a little, little fulcrum kind of thing going on here, which means if I add something to this guy, it's going to dip, and I need to add that same amount to the other side. If I take something away from one side, it's going to tip the scale, and I need to remove that same thing from the other side. Keep that in mind, folks. So remember, by the time I'm done, I want E on one side of my equal sign, and I want a value on the other. Well, according to this guy here, I have E plus 12. Well, the best way to get E all by itself is to actually subtract the 12 from that particular side. I have E plus 12 on my left side here. So what I want to do is take that E plus 12 and actually remove a 12. Uh, from that side. Now remember about this whole scale deal because I just removed 12 from one side of this thing. Well, that means I need to take, I need more room here, I'm going to then need to remove 12 from the other side. Here's the 20 so far and here's that removal of the 12. Everything is back in balance again. Here's the good news. If I have E and I added 12 and then I subtract 12, well, logic states, math states, I'm only going to have 12, uh, excuse me, E left. If I take E and I add a 12 and then I remove that 12, I'm left with E. On the other side here, I have my 12, excuse me, 20 minus 12, and I'm left with 8. So when I'm done, there is my answer, all wrapped up in a nice little circle, okay, which is kind of cool. Now, why does it work? Here's the fun part. How do I draw this out in a tape diagram? Well, let's take a look here. So here's my E plus 12, and that's going to equal 20. Okay. Now I'm just going to draw a simple tape diagram just to demonstrate this particular problem. So here's my total. In fact, my total is both of these guys. Here is a total, right? and here's a total, and they're equivalent to one another. So my total is either 20 or it's E plus 12. Keep that in mind. But if I was to split this up, I have E on this side and I have 12 on this side. There's my E plus 12 giving me 20 or giving me E plus 12 as a total as well. So, what is the next step? Well, let's draw an equal size. Here's an equal size, um, equal size uh, tape diagram. But this time, what I'm going to do here is say to myself, hey, how do I find out this particular value? How do I find this value? Well, I'm going to take 20, and I'm going to subtract 12 from it. Okay, 20 minus 12. Now, that's pretty cool also. I know that works because 20 minus 12 is going to give me that 8 that I know. There's that 8, right? And that 8 plus my 12 that's over there is going to give me my 20. So, so far, so good. Now what I'm going to do is take that 20 because I know 20 up here equals E plus 12. So I'm going to substitute that 20 for the E plus 12 down in this next box. So that 20 is going to be the E plus 12, but I already have this minus 12 here. So I'm going to put that in equal to that 112 right there. Now, how is this pretty cool? Well, this is pretty cool because if I look, I notice that this box and this box, they're of equal size, right? So this box is my 20 minus 12, and this box here is equal to, because they're the same size, E plus 12 minus 12. Look familiar? It should. There's my 20 minus 12, and there is my E plus 12 minus 12. How do I know they're equivalent? Because they're the same size box. So it's a nice concrete representation of why this works. Okay, so that I get my 8 over here, and I get my E plus 12 minus 12, which gives me E over here. Now, the only thing I didn't do was run a check. Now, the check's kind of neat, too, and I'm going to make a big old mess of the screen. I can run a check in two different manners, in two different ways. The first way I can run a check is to simply take the original problem and plug in the, uh, the value of E. So if I have E plus 12, and I'm writing all over this thing, it's a big old mess, and I substitute E for my 8, 
which means I have 8 plus 12 equals 20. And 8 plus 12 does give me 20, so my 20 equals 20, and I'm feeling pretty good. Now, that's a nice check. It works. I get my 20 equaling 20. But on the other side here, there's another way to do it. I'm kind of liking this method. What I'm going to do is take this guy, the big guy over here. I'm going to take my E plus. I'm going to have to make some more room here. I'm going to take my E plus 12 minus 12 equal to 20 minus 12. And now I'm going to substitute for that E value, which is 8. There's that 8 plus 12 minus 12 equals 20 minus 12. And how does that work? Well, here's my plus 12 minus 12. So if I have 8 and I add 12 and then subtract the 12, I'm left with 8. And on the other side, I have my 20 minus 12, which equals 8. I'm liking this check a lot because it actually fits perfectly and it matches my E value by the time I'm done. It's a check that proves that it works, and it's a check that also, by the time I'm done, it matches up with that 8 perfectly. Okay. And that's working out pretty well. So let's do one more. That was an addition. I do want to run a subtraction because it's a little bit different. At least the chart's a little bit different. So here's, here's a subtraction model. Here's my f minus 10 gives me 15. So I'm going to write it a little bigger here so I can see what's up. Here's my balancing act here, right, which is really important. I want to wind up with f all by itself. Now I have this f minus 10. How do I get rid of Excuse me, how do I get rid of the minus 10 kind of thing? Well, really, how do I get f all by itself? What I'm going to want to do here is actually add 10 to this side. Well, if I add 10 to the left side of my equal sign, I'm going to have to add 10 to the other side. How does that help me? Well, my minus 10 plus 10, if I have f and I subtract 10 and then add 10 back in, I'm going to wind up with f again. But on the other side, I'm going to wind up with 25 so that my f equals 25, which is kind of neat. I can run the check right now. Just to make sure it all works, I'll start with my, I'll do my double, my double way here. My f minus 10 gives me 15. I substitute the f, which is 25. So my 25 minus 10 equals 15. Does that hold true? It does, because 15 equals 15. So that works. Or I can use the big equation here. This guy, the minus 10 plus 10 equals 15 plus 10. There it is. And now I can substitute for my f value, which is 25. Minus 10 plus 10 equals 15 plus 10. And I'm liking this one because by the time I'm done, I wind up with my f value, which is great. So if I have 25 and I remove 10 and then add 10, I wind up with 25. And on this side, I have 15 plus 10. Again, gives me 25. So I'm feeling great about that. Now, as far as the model is concerned, Okay, this one's a little different, only because it's subtraction, but I kind of like these models, because this one, I'm starting with f. f is your total, right? In a subtraction problem, the first value there in a subtraction problem is your total. And what you do is you're adding your 10 and 15, or um, let's see. Yep, you're adding your 15 and your 10. Doesn't matter which order you do. Uh, you're adding your 15 and your 10 to actually get your F. Well, uh, so that's what you're going to want to do here. You're going to add, want to add 10 to your 15. But my 15, here's that 15. That 15, there's my 10, right? My 15 is also equal to F minus 10, right? And to get a total here, you'll notice that both of these boxes are, equa are equivalent. There they are. They're the same size. So I have two tape diagrams. They're the same size. They're equivalent. And in order for me to get a total, here's my, here's my 15 plus 10, right? And here is my other side of it, which is f minus 10 plus 10, because I'm going to have to add 10 to this to get the total, right? This is an add, and an add just to get my total, which is f, okay? And that should look familiar, because here is that 15 plus 10 from here. Here is that f minus 10 plus 10 from that side. And I wind up with 25 equaling uh, f again, all over again. And everything works out pretty well. All right, so that was a whirlwind, folks. Uh, but it's pretty exciting stuff. Got to love the algebra. All right, thanks so much. Take care. Bye-bye.